Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Science Fiction Versus. Today we're doing one of my most requested matchups, the Scarab from the Halo series versus the Tripods from War of the Worlds. I know I haven't done as many traditional Versus videos lately, but it seems like you guys really prefer the Factions Compared and the Lore videos. So if you like this, make sure to give it a like and suggest some fun future episodes down in the comments. Anyway, as I mentioned, we're taking the Walkers from War of the Worlds and putting it against the Type 47B Scarab, which is the version you see in Halo 2, Reach, and 3. We'll start off by taking a fairly detailed look at both of the combatants, and then at the end we'll talk through the actual matchup, and I'll make a decision on who I think should win. Let's start first with the Scarab, and if you've played the Halo series, or if you've watched one of the other videos on my channel featuring this vehicle, you're likely very familiar with it. The Type 47B Scarab was one of the most common walkers used by the Covenant. Although it appears to be a traditional vehicle, the Scarab is actually biomechanical, created out of Letgolo, the same creatures that form hunters. The organic portion of the scarab is hard to detect because most of the platform is covered by very thick armor. Although typically there would be covenant on the scarab, the Let Golo controlled most functions of the machine, including walking and firing the weapons. Although it really is a living thing, for simplicity's sake, I probably will call it a vehicle throughout this episode. Let's take a look at the Scarab's weaponry. The biggest weapon and the main weapon on the vehicle was its focus cannon, which could output an extreme amount of damage. Although the range of the gun was somewhat limited, the beam could be avoided, and it did require a charge up time. To understand this weapon, it helps to know that the Scarab's original and continuing purpose is for excavation, particularly for uncovering Forerunner artifacts. This is why the weapon outputs a lot of damage over a wide area up close to the Scarab itself. At the top of the Scarab also sits a heavy plasma cannon. This was usually used in an anti-aircraft role, but I see no reason why it wouldn't be effective against something like a tripod. It outputs a good amount of damage, but nothing compared to its main weapon. Most Scarabs would also have three manned anti-personnel weapons on the surface of the vehicle. I'll allow those for this matchup and give the Covenant two grunts and one elite to use them. Let's now talk about defense and durability. In Halo 2, a Marine tells us that they basically threw everything they had at the Scarab and couldn't do any damage. Similarly, we see them crash through buildings without even stopping. Scarabs are bulking heavy weapons and it's very difficult to take them down. Even in later games when manning tanks or air vehicles, you can't destroy a scarab through conventional means by using the weapons. You have to hit it in the weak spot. Admittedly, this is a gameplay choice, but I also think it reflects the realities of the Scarab's durability. Destroying the vehicle via its weak spot is fairly difficult, and in the games it's much easier to do so if you can go on foot. However, the hind legs especially are fairly vulnerable, and an attack dedicated to those areas can be used to at least temporarily cripple the Scarab. The platform's movement is fairly fast, especially for a vehicle of its size. It can move laterally extremely well. It can also handle tough terrain with ease, although its straight line speed isn't particularly impressive. Overall, the max speed that you can expect the Scarab to reach is about 75 kilometers per hour, which again, for the vehicle size, isn't that bad. Let's now take a look at the Tripod from the War of the World series. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Tripod as it existed in the 2005 movie, not the miniseries and not the book, because I think that that's what most of you guys are probably familiar with. The origins of the Tripod within this movie are up for debate. Some say that the vehicles were buried underground, but then you wonder how in a city like Boston, where there are various subway tunnels, nobody ever saw them before. Others say that the lightning strikes at the beginning of the movies were actually the tripods coming down from space. Ultimately, it makes no difference for this matchup. Let's talk first about the weaponry of the walker, and I think the thing that needs to be addressed right off the bat is the EMP. At the beginning of War of the Worlds, along with the lightning strike, there's an EMP which knocks out most electronics within the area. After the EMP goes off, the walkers emerge and start attacking humanity. However, I'm not certain that the EMP can actually be associated with one individual tripod, so I won't be including it for the purposes of this discussion. The main weapon of the tripod is an absolutely devastating beam weapon. When we first see the creatures or the walkers appear, it does take them a few seconds to fire up their guns, but that could be because they're awakening for the first time in quite a while. Later, we see them fire much quicker, so I'm going to assume that these weapons are basically ready to go at all times. 
This weapon instantly vaporizes organic material that it touches, completely destroying any human beings caught in its path. It's not clear to me whether this is because it expels so much energy or because there's some other forces at play here, but it's incredibly effective at taking down individuals. However, we also see that it does work against non-organic material. It completely destroys a freeway, several houses, and although it doesn't vaporize things like it does with people, it still seems to be quite powerful. The beam can also be fired very quickly with little recharge time and seems to be extremely accurate. There's one scene especially that shows just how deadly the weapon is. Humans are trying to run away on a hill and tripods are just absolutely mowing them down. The walkers also have anti-personnel weapons, but I don't think that those are very important here. On the topic of durability, tripods have extremely powerful force shields. Throughout the movie until the very end, walkers are completely invulnerable to attacks which come from outside its shield bubble. It is, however, vulnerable to attacks from within, and we see Tom Cruise destroy one with a well-placed grenade. The walker's armor doesn't seem to be anything special, and later on, when the shield is down, we see humans manage to destroy one with a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher, but the shield seems to be quite impressive. Onto movement, the long, spindly legs of the tripod does help it move fairly quickly, and it shows the ability to navigate tough terrain like cities with ease, much like the Scarab. Finally, I need to talk about the sickness, which plays a big part in the 2005 film. Humanity are able to defeat the tripods only after they are weakened by various airborne diseases within Earth's atmosphere. The sickness seems to not only confuse them, but also removes their shields and leaves them 100% vulnerable to attack. However, this sickness is not instantaneous. The tripods only start showing signs several days after the actual invasion itself, so I don't think in this battle that it will play any sort of role. With that basic description of both combatants out of the way, let's now look at the actual matchup. And I think it'd be interesting for you guys to vote right now on who you predict will win. Go ahead and click the annotation in the upper right hand corner. For me, I think it is fairly obvious. The tripod here, I think, has most of the advantages. Its weapons are most likely more powerful, it has shielding, and it's probably faster, or at least just as fast as the Scarab. Let's talk first about weaponry. According to the Halo Encyclopedia, the Scarab's main weapon can melt through 5 feet of concrete. That is incredibly impressive, but I wouldn't be surprised if the tripod could match that. We see it completely destroy a freeway with ease. Its weapons also fire much faster than the Scarab's main weapon and are much more accurate. Another thing is that the Scarab almost has a type disadvantage here. We see how good the guns of the tripod are at taking down organic material. Well, although it is covered by a shell, the Scarab is made out of a living being, or many living beings. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the tripod was able to vaporize the Legolo who formed the Scarab. With no sickness debilitating it, I think the tripod shields should also be capable of stopping anything thrown at it by the Scarab, or at least stopping a few salvos of anything thrown at it. We see the tripod survive being attacked by helicopters and tanks and infantry all at once without the shields even coming close to failing. I don't think the first blast of the scarab will be enough to break through the tripod's defenses, and by the time a second one is charged up, I think the tripod will have already decimated its opponent. It also could perhaps avoid it, we know how fast it is, and it's got those long spindly legs which allows it to move very quickly, but even if it doesn't, I think it will survive. All in all, even if the weapons of the tripod aren't as effective as I'm guessing they may be, I still think they'll be able to cut down the scarab very easily, removing the threat and taking it down with ease. I give the vehicle for more of the worlds the victory and I say it wins 9.5 times out of 10. The only chance that the scarab has is if the troops on board can get within the energy shield of the tripod, perhaps destroy it with some plasma grenades, but I don't think that's the first thing that they'll think to do. That however is just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, you already voted, but go down in the comments, argue it out, maybe you guys will change my mind. Also let me know any future versus episodes you'd like to see and anything you'd like to see on on the channel generally. I've been uploading a lot more on my second channel, X2. You guys should make sure you go check that out for some different content. I do some vlogs, some gaming, just basically whatever I want. Also, subscribe on Twitter if you'd like, or follow, I should say. And if you really want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon page where you get various bonuses and get to choose future episode ideas. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.